Usually when we say fix it in post, what we really mean is, I don't want to deal with this right now. It's the editor's problem. Welcome back. My name is Kevin from the filmmakersblog.com and today's video is all about the end game. In this video, I'm going to show you a couple of ways where fix it in post actually does work. And to do that, I'm going to steal some clips from my latest short film, Jacked, so you know that the things that I'm talking about in this video, I've actually used on a project. I usually don't tell people the mistakes that I've made in a production because once you know, it's really hard to unsee it. But in the name of education and views, here we go. For this first example, I'm actually not gonna tell you what I did. I wanna make it a little game and have you guess. Um, yeah, right now it's like the person that says, guess what? And you're like, what? And he's like, no, guess? Those people are terrible, but this is nothing like that. Hey, you'll never guess what happened. What? No, no, I want you to guess. So what was the mistake? And I'll tell you right now, it was the ice cream cone. Here are the two raw shots back to back of our character Jack handing the ice cream cone to Jessica. Either he took a bite of the ice cream off camera or the first cone melted and we had to fly in another cone for the next shot. That seems more likely. I'm gonna call this first tip photo tracking because I'm not really sure what else to call it and that's basically what we did. To fix this in post, we took a screenshot of the ice cream cone from this close up shot, drew a mask around the top of the cone, scaled the image down to fit realistically on top of the other shot and created multiple tracking points to follow the cone we were trying to cover up. And there you have it, CGI ice cream. I'm not gonna make you guys guess on the next one so we'll move straight on to the next scenario which involves false room noise and dubbing. Who are you? Who are you, bro? I, I found your card in the sand. My name is Jack. How much do you weigh, Jack? God, that sounds awful. So there's a couple layers of nasty in this audio, but the first thing you probably noticed was the hissing that plagued the entire scene. Oh yeah, and this. My name is Jack. Ah. My name is Jack. What happened there? Boys and girls, that is what pointing the mic in the opposite direction sounds like. My name's Jack. Yes, I'm holding the mic today. Don't have a mic stand? You just gotta make it work. Low budget filmmaking. <laughs> they say audio is just as important, if not more important than the picture on screen. And I think this pretty much proves it. Who are you? Who are you, bro? I found your card in the sand. Uh, my name is Jack. The low quality audio, dare I say bad audio, just breaks up the scene and takes you out of the story. It's called dubbing. We started out dubbing most of the lines in the scene. I didn't dub all of the lines just because some clips had better audio than others. And thankfully those were the clips that had humor built into the delivery of the lines that we just weren't able to replicate. After we dubbed the lines, we mixed it in with a false room tone. I say false just because it wasn't the actual room tone that we got from the room. Like I said, we were in a garage, so it was a very open space and a little bit- My name is Jack. It was a pre-recorded room tone from a room tone package that we threw into the scene. Audio is so important and post-production saved this scene. For the last editing trick I have for you today, we're gonna use a problem or scenario that I'm sure every one of you have made and I've definitely made because it was just in this last film. Right when your mind wanders or focuses too much on one thing, other things start to disappear around you. That's why when you're in the editing room and you've already finished the entire edit on your film, you look back at one shot and you realize there's a freaking stool on the right side of your main character while he's doing a pull up. I finished the edit. I must have seen this scene over a hundred times and I didn't see it until now. So what do you do? Well, you can paint it out. This turned into this. And I'll tell you, that is exactly how I thought it looked the first hundred times I saw this. To paint out your unwanted objects, blend in the thing you want gone with the surrounding area. Now this is a lot easier when the area of concern is not distorted with a lot of shapes or colors. Like in our case, it was a sand pit. 
so it was a lot of uniform grain and textures and i think that's one of the main reasons why it was easy to cover up all righty a couple of ways for you to fix your film in post-production dare i say fix it in post. If you have anything similar to this going on with your project right now, apply these methods and you should be dandy. Once again, my name is Kevin from thefilmmakersblog.com and since you've made it this far, go ahead and smash that like button like your Michael Bay's explosive director, subscribe and ring that notification bell and I'll see you guys in the next video. Yeah, in the front row kicking back old school trash like damn get enough of this more like i don't even know where i am oh baby get hyped to the beat let's go cause this is our jam this is our jam